I will uh, briefly introduce the first of the uh, two projects I mentioned before, Saigeia and Indigo. I mean, I will make a, a short presentation on the Saigeia project. I'll introduce you the ACFEST, the way we will be working in the next days. And then uh, uh, Jacinto Dombito from INF and Bari uh, will speak about the Indigo Data Cloud project. He will speak uh, by remote, by video conference. So I will uh, uh, give you some concepts, some definitions and driving considerations. And then I'll present the project, the Open Science Platform, and then a few words on this, the, the Summer ACFEST. Uh, after the first two presentations, um, Bruce will uh, uh, also explain you the social, between quotes, part of the Hackfest, because uh, we really want to we, we really want to have a, a, a nice happening where people from different cultures, different uh, different countries get together to uh, produce software for scientific applications. So um, very quickly. Uh, what uh, scientists do since uh, uh, 400, almost 400 years is to apply a, a looping procedure that we refer to as the scientific method. So the scientific method has uh, two different aspects at the beginning with Galileo Galilei and in the 17th century with the inductive reasoning, uh, observing nature, and then more recently in the 20th century, especially with the theory of relativity and uh, quantum mechanics uh, and uh, the standard model for particle physics uh, uh, more um, uh, later, that we have the deductive reasoning. So we are trying to extend the theory and we check, the, we confirm, we try to confirm or to validate or uh, invalidate the theory with experiments. And since uh, the uh, mid 17th century, what scientists do, they publish papers. So the onset of scientific publications, dedicated scientific publications in, in, the mid, in, the, in, the, in the mid 17th century marked a real scientific revolution, but it's almost the same since 4th century. So people publish papers and, publish, uh, and uh, all the scientific information is done through papers. And also the careers of scientists are based on papers, citations, and so on. The scientific method stands on two fundamental pillars, repeatability and reproducibility of results. The first has to do with the uh, closeness of agreement between independent results, and uh, uh, reproducibility has to do with closeness of agreement between independent results obtained with the same method on identical test material. So uh, scientists apply the scientific method. The scientific method relies on these two pillars, so you may wonder if science is really reproducible. And actually, this is not. It came up very recently in the, in the last few years that lots of fundamental uh, papers, uh, seminal papers in many disciplines, especially medicine, uh, uh, people tried, attempted to reproduce, starting from the papers, but they, they uh, miserably failed. So uh, in many cases, in almost 90% of uh, attempts failed. And uh, uh, the reasons of failure was that data were not available, the data used to publish the paper, or the software was not available, the software used to analyze the data. Uh, uh, besides this, repeatability and reproducibility, which are the fundamental pillars of the scientific method, are not all. There are other uh, uh, important things. So besides repeat and reproduce uh, science, you should also be able to reuse. So the ultimate goal of producing science is that uh, some other people can take over from what you, 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 you have done in your analysis, get access to all the aspects of your uh, uh, scientific research, and carry on. So extend the analysis and make a, a, a additional results. So in the last uh, 30 years or so, uh, the scientific computing evolved very quickly from a centralized uh, uh, approach with mainframe computing up to the 70s, and then to cluster computing, grid computing, 
and lately cloud computing. And this was possible uh, 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 due to a combined effect of, on, the other, on one hand, the reduction in the cost of the hardware and in the reduction of the cost of the networks. And on the other end, in the increase of the power of the commercial of the shell's components and the increase of the bandwidth of wide area networks, I mean, especially research and educational network. So a new word was uh, uh, coined uh, 15 years ago, uh, the concept of e-science. E-science uh, uh, is uh, science done with electronic infrastructure, with e-infrastructures. So e-infrastructure is uh, a, a new concept where computing centers and laboratories where experiments are, are taking data and the data are stored and analyzed are connected through uh, very large bandwidth research networks and uh, 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 special software that we call middleware is deployed on these centers and uh, make them behave as they were just a, dispersed, a single computer dispersed over the network. So e infrastructure are key to let virtual research communities uh, groups of scientists spread all over the world across the 24 time zones to access the, uh, to the, the data, to run the applications, and to use the instruments and the sensors in the laboratories. E-infrastructures are key also to support the scientific method. So this is the scientific method, um, is the looping, the looping procedure. And uh, uh, high performance computing clusters, grids, and clouds are very important to, to analyze data, to exploit existing data, and to archive data. And uh, for the archiving, data preservation and data infrastructures are also important. Data infrastructures, I mean, in the, in the general meaning of open access document repositories, open data repositories, are important to share research data. Uh, together with the papers, together with the, with the publications, and uh, let people annotate and produce new papers. And also semantic web uh, enrichment, semantic web technologies are also important to connect different topics, connect data and documents, or different kind of uh, elements of uh, scientific results. The challenge is to walk across this knowledge path both ways. You usually start from the top and you go down to the, to the, to the bottom. So you start from reviewing the literature, running experiments, writing papers, and so on. But uh, we, we would like to go the other way around, starting from a paper, being able to access the data connected to that paper, the software, the algorithm, and even the possibility to rerun the experiment on a cloud infrastructure, on an e-infrastructure in general. So the very challenging part is uh, going up and down uh, 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 in, in this knowledge path. Uh, this is possible if uh, we apply an emerging paradigm, which is called the open science paradigm. There is uh, no, uh, no unique definition of open science. I'm listing two that I like and that are very uh, uh, very uh, common on the, on the web. The first one is actually the motto of a book, a seminal book on open science. And the other one is, uh, uh, was created by a, a, report, a recent report of the OECD that studied the um, establishment and the uptake of this paradigm uh, worldwide. So open science is a means and not an end in itself. So there is no uh, uh, a final uh, or specific recipe to do open science. It's, uh, it's just a, a, an attitude that scientists should have to share their data, their publications, and all the elements that are needed to reproduce the data and to reuse the data. So it includes many aspects and stages of research processes, uh, thus enabling full reproducibility and reusability of scientific results. So open science is a combination of approaches. So to, to do open science, you should have open access, access to publications, open source software to share, open data, linked data, I mean, if you really want to use semantics to uh, uh, enrich 
the uh, research output. You should leverage on open standards and uh, you should so open that also citizen science has the possibility for uh, people knowing the, uh, the f knowing the field but not really working in the research field can contribute. So concepts like crowdsourcing or so crowdfunding or research are also part of the open science uh, paradigm. The European Union and the European Commission are even investing on open science. There was a, recently a call for uh, um, open science cloud for research in Europe that uh, uh, will fund one project up to 10 million euros to, to, to create this open science cloud. But uh, in this uh, respect, I mean, in this uh, um, event, what we would like to exploit is the possibility to extend open science in other regions of the world where actually this concept and also the concept of e-infrastructure are kind new. So uh, after all, open science is about connections, linking people, linking data, linking programs, linking software. So here, there is a map of uh, uh, network links across the world. So you can see the, the huge connection between the US and Europe. Uh, part of the connection with Japan, Australia, Latin America, but you can barely see Africa in the middle. And this is also true when you talk about scientific connections. So this is the maps of collaborations in the field of medicine between 2005-2009. So a link is a link connecting authors of papers on PubMed. So uh, you can see again the strong connections between the part and you can see that there are very few connections with um, Africa. And these two maps are even more striking. This is the map of the world rescaled by the number of documents in Web of Science published by authors living in the country. So you can see how fat are the northern hemisphere and how slim is Africa, for example. And this is the same the map scale by the number of journals, journals published there. So there is a challenge, make African science and scientists more visible. And there is an opportunity to exploit e-infrastructures to do that. That is actually what we want to do. And the vision is to promote open science in Africa to make African science and African scientists more visible. So the SciGaia project is just about that. We want to uh, leverage on e-infrastructure concepts like science gateways, like data infrastructures, to promote the open science in the continent. The SciGaia is funded by European Commission with about 1.4 million euros. We started um, um, a little bit more than one year ago, so we have uh, 10 months to go till the end of April next year. The project is coordinated by the Brunel University and has key partners, European partners and African partners. And uh, we have uh, the two regional research networks, namely Ubuntu Net Alliance on the southeast and Wakran on the southwest. This was done in purpose to have as partners of the project organizations that can act as interface towards lots of universities and research institutes all over the continent. So the idea is to propose, to propose structured guides and educational documents to foster national research networks and to support national research networks and communities of practice in Africa to uh, make their science uh, uh, more visible. So there are, lot, there are different work packages. One of these work packages is about training we ran in the, in the past months uh, an online school and the ACFEST is actually one of the most, import, actually the most important training events in the lifetime of the project. Uh, SciGeg is strongly committed to promote open science and we recently um, created the so-called Dakar Declaration on Open Science in Africa that was announced at the SciGeg workshop in Dakar, Senegal. Uh, three months ago. Um, this has been signed already by, this is, was quite old, I mean we have almost 130 signatures and 
it, the Dakar Declaration has also been signed uh, at the institutional levels by different institutions from Europe and Africa. And uh, we invite all of you to visit this page. And if you share the concept and if you share the way the, the declaration has been exposed, we kindly ask you to digitally sign. You just to fill a form and submit and confirm your signature clicking on the email. But uh, we went beyond uh, general consensus on open science and general promotion of open science. We, using tools and, and uh, services insisting on e-infrastructures, we created a federated platform for, uh, made of uh, commons, research science commons, for open science in Africa. So this is explained in this other page. And several of the services that will be exposed and will be explained during this ACTFest are part of the open science. Uh, we have, in the open science platform made by SciGaia, we have um, several services that are put together and orchestrated, but uh, uh, other services, especially those developed by the Indigo Data Cloud project, could be very easily plugged in and extend the, this uh, open science um, platform. Each of the services can be cloned, so you will be using services in the, uh, that we have, that we deployed for SciGaia, but uh, um, uh, if you are interested, each of the services can be cloned at your, your organization and you can install it and, and use it for uh, the purpose of supporting your community. Uh, we managed to implement the knowledge workflow and actually this is what we would like to enable in for your use cases as well. So the idea, you, you go uh, clockwise on this picture, so researchers or citizen scientists can search and discover documents, but not only documents, they can discover all the objects that are needed to reproduce that particular scientific product. So the, the paper, the data, the algorithm, the program, even a complete virtual machine or a container that can be rerun on a cloud-based infrastructure. So you can use the science gateways, so high-level portals to run the analysis, starting from the papers you have found. So you can reuse the data, you can extend the scientific analysis, you can produce new results, and then you can write a new paper and publish on the open access repository and link the new paper to the old one. So you extend the ensemble of elements of our research product. So that's the idea that uh, we have and uh, we will demonstrate all the different components and then we will let you try these components. And the idea is that uh, you, can, you may leverage on one or more of this to implement the use cases you proposed when you applied to be selected for the um, participation to the ACTFEST. Uh, so, as I said, the e-research summer ACTFEST is, uh, is an event to, uh, where we want to bring science to the web and the web to, to the science. So we really want to use the web technologies to make science more visible and also uh, life for scientists easier to reproduce, to produce and reproduce and reuse scientific components. So the, the, this, the ACTFEST will go on in the next two weeks. Uh, actually, we got very, uh, lots of interest from African partners and several of them could not come due to problem in the issuance of visas. Uh, so we decided to run this ACTFEST twice. So we will be running in the first two days and then we will record everything. Then people will come at the end of the, of the second week and we will run another, another time in the last two weeks of July. Of course, not all the instructors may be present, so we will, uh, uh, for some uh, presentations, we will rerun them. For some others, we will use the, the video recordings. So the event is co-sponsored. Co-sponsored means in terms of instructors, in terms of participants, and in terms of uh, uh, projects and use cases by three 
different uh, European Commission funded projects, SAIGEA that I presented, Indico Data Cloud that uh, will be presented by uh, the next speaker, and a cost project ENEL. We have some representatives here and uh, other people will come during the week. So the main objective is to integrate scientific use cases, those use cases that you proposed, through a pervasive adoption of web technologies and standards, and make them available to their end users through science gateways. Portals, desktop applications, I mean, any kind of high-level interface uh, through which people can run the applications that you will be developing in the next days. The ultimate goal is to promote and foster open and repositable research, uh, and uh, this is why we will expose um, op open, we will leverage on the Open Science Commons uh, um, concept. So we have a very interesting topics and several tools and technologies that will be explained already this morning and in the next day. So the idea is that you propose the use case, you came with the use case, and since we are leveraging on web technologies, we will show you RESTful APIs, REST interfaces, through which you can use the services and the tools that uh, we will explain in the first two days. So all the tools, the common denominator of all the tools that will be explained is that they, they have a REST interface. So using the REST interface, you can use these tools, one, more than one, all of them, in implementing your, your, your use case. And the services are deployed on an infrastructure, actually on more than one. We have the SciGaia infrastructure, we have the Indigo testbed, so you will be able to test the tools on a real environment. Uh, the, all the presentations in the first two days so will have end zones, uh, parts, and at the end, when you will be actually coding, implementing your applications, you will be using, you will be accessing real e-infrastructures. Uh, the agenda. So today and tomorrow, we will present two technologies and tools, those that are listed in the agenda page. And you have seen already when you apply it. And for each of them, there will be theoretical introduction and end zones. So you will be able to use this, to run this on your computer. Then on uh, day three, we will be listening to you. So uh, each of the use cases will, present, will be presented. Uh, I distributed some template for this. You are welcome to use it. Otherwise, you are welcome also to use your own. But uh, we would appreciate that you indicate the technologies and the tools that you plan to adopt. So you will be listening to tools, you will be listening to how to use them, and then what we expect is that on Wednesday, you will tell us, I want to use this, I would like to use that, I plan to use that one. Because in that case, it will be easier for us to redirect you to the developers of, the, of these tools and to short circuit the contacts with the developers to improve your support. The other days, there will people who will stay only one week, there will people stay for the, for the whole two weeks, but the other days, there will be implementation of the use cases. So we choose this big room on purpose, so in the first three days, you will be listening to us, I mean, in the first two days, you will be listening to us, in the third day, we will be listening to you, and then from the fourth day on, you will be scattered around, and you will working on implementing the use case that you proposed. So that's the idea. Um, so, uh, in, just to summarize, the open science vision can be implemented only the openness part of them becomes pervasive in day by day research, and this is possible only if you can use open tools, and this is what we will be showing you. Um, science output reproducibility, but also reusability and extensibility are key to walk through the knowledge path in both directions. So you will be able to uh, uh, connect papers to data, to algorithm, to virtual machines or containers to rerun all this. 
And the SciGaia project is strongly committed to promote the uptake of the open science paradigm and its building a viable uh, federated platform. Federated means that uh, uh, all the services of the federation can be used using federated credentials. So if you have federated credentials issued by your organization, you will be able to uh, get authenticated in all the services that we will be explaining. If you don't have such credentials, uh, we have a catch-all identity provider and we can issue a couple of credentials, username and password in minutes. So if you need it, we will explain you how to get these credentials so that you can get authenticated. Uh, we would like uh, to have this uh, as a scientific, technological, but also a social attempt to exploit web technologies. Bruce will jump in after the, sec the next presentation. And uh, we want to exploit, as I said, the web technologies to uptake the open science paradigm in a truly international and multicultural environment. So that's it for the first presentation. Thank you very much. And if you have questions, feel free to ask.